Keith in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania says, I've always wanted to know how N.T. Wright would explain his understanding of justification to a local rural church congregation where people aren't as versed in the various schools of Pauline interpretation. Well, this is a good opportunity, I think, just to perhaps unpack for sure. a casual listener yeah. uh, in, in simple enough terms what you mean what you think Paul meant by justification and, and how that's commonly been in your view misinterpreted yes, I, I it's slightly frustrating because this word simple um, <laughs> uh, I've written one or two books with the word simple or simply in the title and one of my publishers said to me once Tom I have to sit you down and explain the meaning of simply and and I said listen if somebody comes to me in St Andrews where I work and says tell me how to get to Glasgow and keep it simple I could say just keep heading west and a bit south and you can't miss it. But it might be kind to tell him that there's a big river which is several miles wide yes. and that there's a mountain range mm. and that there's this way around or that way around and you might get in a mess. So forgive the complexity, but sometimes it is actually necessary for the sake of getting you to where you need to go. I think if I were faced with that with a congregation that had never really thought it through, what I'd like to do is to take them to Galatians chapter 2 and say, let's just sit with Galatians 2 and maybe even do some role play as to what's going on in the church in Antioch. Because this is the first time that Paul talks about justification and we presume that this makes sense. You know, I, I want to bring in Romans and Philippians as well mm -hmm. eventually, but not yet. And in Galatians, what's going on is there's a, a, a crisis because Jews and Gentiles are sharing fellowship in the Messiah, sharing table fellowship together as Christians with no distinction between them. And then some people come from Jerusalem and say, oh, you shouldn't be doing this. Gentiles, you're not supposed to be in the same, at the same table as Jews. And so please go away. Um, and or the Jews separate themselves. And when Paul is talking about justification, that is the presenting issue. And our trouble with reading Galatians 2 is that because we have in our traditions, justification is, I'm a sinner, I need to get to heaven, so I need to be justified in order for that to happen. We import that back into Galatians 2, and we forget what was actually going on. And the point is that God in Christ has dealt with the sin problem, not so that we can go to heaven, but so that God by his spirit can live in our midst and so that we can be the family of God together because the reason Jews didn't eat with Gentiles is that they were regarded as unclean, mm -hmm. as automatically sinners because they were outside the law, they were idolaters, etc., etc. And the point of the gospel for Paul is that what has happened on the cross means that anyone who is in Christ has had their sin and evil and all that dealt with so that then there is no reason why uh, a, a Christian Jew shouldn't sit down. So justification is God's declaration that all those who are in the Messiah are part of the same family and that their sins are forgiven. And it's so, not, uh, in that sense, a transactional thing as it was sometimes presented by the reformers. And what then happens? Sort of so this was an answer to the question, how yes. might you start it off yes, with a village yes. congregation? <laughs> I, I would get them to wallow in Galatians 2 okay. until they got the message. Yes. And then they might want to go on to Galatians 3 as well, mm. which is about the covenant with Abraham, etc. Sooner or later, I would want to take them through Philippians 3, which is a similar thing, but with Paul's autobiography being very central. Um, uh, you know, where I had all these Jewish privileges, but I, I abandoned them for the sake of the Messiah, etc. Sooner or later, I would want to get to Romans. And in Romans, and only in Romans, justification is reframed within a law court setting. What has happened in the Christian tradition is that people have taken the law court setting from Romans, have forgotten the covenantal and familial settings, which were the original location in Galatians, and constructed a whole extra thing based only on a law court setting, mm. and have then tried to work out how it works. And particularly, they've tried to do so out of Romans 1 to 4 without Romans 5 to 8. But actually, the argument of Romans on justification is 1 to 8, with then 
coming through to 9 to 11, um, the whole strand of, of, of what this means for God's worldwide purposes in and through Israel, and then 12 to 16. So it's more complicated. If you start with the post-Luther questions, then okay, we can have great fun going through the 16th, 17th century through to the 21st, different theories of how people get justified, all with a law court with either imputed righteousness or imparted righteousness or whatever. And I want to say, I know what those questions are about. Mm. They can be extremely helpful pastorally, but they can also be extremely puzzling. I believe that the Bible itself is the place to start. And this is the great irony mm. that Luther was saying, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, but actually often his followers have forgotten. Luther, well, the they, <laughs> they go to Luther and they go to subsequent diminishes. Because Luther was quite a, a many-sided, rich mm. character. He said a lot mm. of things about a lot of things. Mm. And I don't think actually he would have radically disagreed with me about Galatians. He might have done a bit. Mm. Bart already in 1955, in one of the volumes of Church Dogmatics, called Luther on his misreading of Galatians. Right. Very interesting. Okay. So there's all sorts of issues then. But again, it's comparatively simple if you start with the Bible and allow the Bible to tell you how you should use these words. But the problem is when a word that is in our translations of the Bible cuts loose and it gets on a tradition of its own, then when people start there, mm. they assume that what the Bible said means what we've made that word mean. And again and again, that ain't necessarily so. 